Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark coming at you from Hong Kong at Token 2049. Today, I got the chance to sit down with Vanessa Grillette. She is the executive director over at Consensus. Vanessa, welcome. Thank you. Now, for anybody for anybody who hasn't heard about Consensus, what are you guys doing? Can you give us the elevator pitch? Sure. Consensus is the, one of the largest blockchain Ethereum companies. Um, what we do is we are the ecosystem builder for Ethereum. We have five activities. Um, the first one is a venture production studio where we seed um, and grow uh, small scale companies. Uh, we have about 40 companies that we, uh, that we have under our main umbrella. Um, the second activity is a consulting uh, activity where we work with Fortune 500 companies and, um, and governments and NGOs. Uh, the third activity is uh, we have something called Consensus Academy, mm -hmm. which aims at educating developers and um, C-suite as well as uh, regulators and governments. Uh, we also have something called Consensus Capital with an investment fund of over $50 million, um, token foundry, which helps other companies do token launches, and an asset management firm. We also have our last but not least acti fifth activity, which uh, focuses on uh, developing um, uh, a client on the uh, protocol layer uh, that's called uh, Pegasus. Very cool. That's that's a lot of stuff, and that's but that's all really exciting stuff too. And there's so many different things um, to really dive into. But what I want to talk about today, which Really, what do you see the main areas of blockchain as far as use cases being? What are perhaps the most important use cases and why do we need it? Um, in terms of social impact or in general? In terms of social impact. In terms of social impact, um, we created at Consensus uh, the Blockchain for Social Impact Coalition. And when we created that coalition, we asked our members who are um, the largest NGOs and charities and impact investors mm -hmm. uh, in the space who are active in blockchain, where do you see um, the most activities and the most impact? And they came up with four sectors uh, or four uh, pillars. The first one was financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. The second one was um, identity and vulnerable population. Interesting. The third one was supply chain. And the fourth one was energy and climate. Mm -hmm. So those were the four um, sectors which we started with. Then uh, as the year went by, other sectors emerged, um, which was more linked to transparency uh, in the charity sector, um, supporting uh, human rights activists, mm -hmm. uh, and also um, uh, anything related to democracy and voting. And, uh, and governance. So those are also other sectors that we focus on. And again, that's, that's a, a really wide range of things, but they're all so important. You just hit on so many really key points that blockchain can just really revolutionize the world. I mean, voting, massive. Financial inclusion, massive. It just it goes on and on and on. So if we look at, I guess, maybe we could dive in a little more to one or two of these specific use cases and talk about how is blockchain actually going to drive the social change in those areas. Mm -hmm. So when you think about voting, um, right now, uh, I'll just give you an example. Um, there's, a, there's a blockchain uh, association called Democracy Earth. Um, during the, uh, pe the discussions of the peace treaty uh, in uh, Colombia, uh, some of the expats uh, could not vote uh, because they were expats. And so Democracy Earth organized through the blockchain uh, a venue for them to vote on the peace treaty uh, so that their voice could be heard, right? So it did not count as the official vote, mm -hmm. but it was able to give them a voice. So you see how this changes the dynamic uh, of a social issue, uh, and that's the first step, right? So we're looking at different ways of representing people, mm -hmm. and I think uh, we will see in the future uh, different ways of, of us thinking about what democracy looks like, 
not just uh, securing more of the voting, but really about how we uh, are the voice of the citizens. That's really cool. And I know there's some skeptics out there that don't think that blockchain and voting for some reason are a good fit, but I think this is such an amazing use case for blockchain. It's a verification of voting. It eliminates any potential claims of voter fraud and all these different things. Not to mention that, that's an amazing use case. People from all around the world, the expat community from Colombia, were able to have their voices heard in that process. So that's really, really cool. Now, what countries do you think perhaps are most in need of I guess cryptocurrency or blockchain driven social change. Where do you see the need being most? So um, cryptocurrency and blockchain can be uh, used both in developed countries and developing countries either to complete or um, increment uh, existing systems or to completely leapfrog uh, non existing or or non-existing systems or corrupt systems mm -hmm. or systems that just don't work. Um, people see a lot of potential um, in developing countries as we've seen other technologies leapfrog uh, existing systems like for example with your cell phone, mm -hmm. etc. in the payment system that, that, had ar that has already happened. So we might see the same phenomenon with blockchain and so we're very hopeful uh, that will happen again. Um, so for example, in the payment system, direct payments, reduction of the cost of remittances is something that we're looking at and that people are focusing mm -hmm. on. Uh, so direct access to uh, new ways uh, to have access to financial services, which may not be banks, but new services uh, for the unbanked, uh, and also in terms, for example, of supply chain, um, getting more secure supply chain for farmers or more access to property rights uh, for farmers, which are uh, part of the vulnerable populations, which uh, uh, which really are the first uh, layer which are hit uh, mm -hmm. when there's problems. A lot of people take for granted that they can walk down the street and go to Money Machine and take out as much money as they want, or they can walk down the street and go to their bank, or they can easily send a, a wire transfer from one person to another, but you know, the numbers are staggering about how many people are actually unbanked in the world and have no access to financial services, and I think they're actually really, just this is a nail on the head situation, they're simply going to jump over that. They don't need to have brick and mortar banks when they can do everything on their phones. Mm -hmm. And that's where, of course, cryptocurrency comes in because it's, you know, verifiable. It's got all the protections that need to take place. Now, I guess as far as people wanting to take action and say, hey, social change is going to be awesome. How can I get involved in this? How can people do that? So that's an interesting question. Um, I think if you're, if you're a developer, um, you can always jump the bandwagon and just say, create your own company. <laughs> um, if you don't know where to start, um, there's several, you know, coalitions like our coalition or other coalitions mm -hmm. where you can, you know, start participating, jump on the project. Um, if you're an investor, you can start funding these projects. You don't have to do, dedicate 100% of your time if you're, you know, you're just learning. Uh, but what I would do is read as much as possible, mm -hmm. educate yourself, um, try to help, do, donate a little bit of your time, of your experience, of your, um, you know, wealth, if you, if you have some, something to give, um, and try to get involved, uh, and try to understand the problems on the ground, and um, try to go to meetups, there are plenty of meetups um, all over the, we're, we're organizing meetups in San Francisco, New York, London, mm -hmm. Paris, uh, we did one in Mexico, we're currently going to do one in Mexico. So um, really just try to educate yourself and it, it, it's going to be a snowball effect. You will you know, meet people, mm -hmm. uh, find ideas, uh, even if you go through philanthropy or just impact investing, um, try, to, try to get involved in, in any manner that you can, whether it's your time, your money, or your talent. 
that's awesome. I think it's such a good message for everyone out there. It's not just about you know the the constant memes we see in the cryptocurrency space. We're gonna get a Lamborghini and all this stuff. Well, that's so one thing for a lot of people. But I, I think it was Richard Branson who actually wrote a whole book on the idea that doing good is actually really good business, and it's where the world's moving. And if you can partake in this, and there's so many opportunities actually to get involved in the cryptocurrency blockchain space. There's so many projects which are developing. And they need communities, they need people who can represent them, who can talk about their projects, and they need investors to invest in them so that they can deliver yeah. these social goods. Yeah, and the time when you know you made your money and then you gave it away is over. Our generation is not looking at this anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, the time is now. Um, there's this huge, uh, you know, this huge uh, uh, amount of value that has been created and I think we have the opportunity to deploy it in a very positive way mm -hmm. and uh, I think whether it's you know even in your current business if you can find a way to spin it in a positive way I think that's already a lot uh, and just think of the end user and how your current business can also benefit uh, other end users that could be a more uh, vulnerable part of the population. Absolutely. There, again, there's just so much, if you just stop to think for a while, there's so much possibility out there. How can I help someone else? Or how can I make the world a better place? Uh, it may sound, uh, it may be naive to some people, but that's what's happening, guys. The world is becoming a better place, and this is part of that equation. This is helping people all around the world, and for all the things we mentioned here. Now, final question for you. What's the future of cryptocurrency? Where do you see the space in, for example, 10 years? So I see it um, really as a revolution. Um, I see us really using cryptocurrency in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. um, I see it transforming political, um, political uh, systems. Uh, I see it transforming the way we interact uh, from an economic standpoint mm -hmm. um, and through and how economic actors interact with themselves. We see it uh, reducing significantly frictions in settlement systems uh, for every transaction. And um, I think that will create huge economic upsides. Mm -hmm. um, and overall also for the underserved population. So I'm very hopeful that uh, whether you're doing social impact or whether you're also just um, contributing to the development of the blockchain, um, it, will, um, it will be for the betterment of, of the entire population. Yeah, absolutely. It's The potential is massive. And I know there's uh, a lot of people out there think, well, not really going to be a thing. And I remember there's this great quote, and I, I don't remember exactly from which company it was, but one of the, the head of one of the big computer companies said, well, we're only need five or six computers globally at a maximum. There's so many use cases out here for blockchain technology. We haven't even discovered all of them yet. This is the thing. We're still, you know, putting our feet in the water and finding out what this can all do. And we've talked about only a, a sliver of use cases today. And there's so much potential here. So it, it's really exciting times. It's a really exciting thing to be involved in. Vanessa, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been a really interesting chat. Thank you. <laughs>